Hi guys, and welcome to our new Roof Listing Colloquium, colloquium session. And um, today we're going to talk about how to create a monochromatic palette and what to expect and how to do it. And, um, and the reason why we're going to do this, it's because uh, traditionally monochromatic uh, palettes have been understood as just using black and white, but that's not um, the only option that we have. So I'm going to talk about why it's important to uh, consider monochromatic palettes. And I'll bring examples of monochromatic palettes um, uh, so we can see how um, artists have done it. And then we're going to create one monochromatic palette that's going to be based on uh, orange. It's not going to be just orange, but um, we'll just start with uh, black and white, but then I'll explain how to add other colors to keep it monochromatic, but uh, to create ranges. And in that sense, ranges of uh, value. Let me just uh, see if I can share um, this uh, a few tabs that I just planned. So this, I just put uh, Monet uh, monochromatic and um, there are many paintings. Let me see if I can just show just this. Um, uh, maybe not. Okay, so this is for example, um, one that I love. Um, he painted this uh, from um, his um, boat studio. Uh, I should be able to do this better because it's a lot of tabs going on, but anyhow, uh, I don't know what this is happening. Okay, hold on one second, you guys. Uh, I think this is going to be it. Hold on. Well, it wasn't it, but <laughs> I'm just going to go to the next one. I just brought some Rembrandts as well, and this is an example of uh, almost monochromatic. Obviously, there's a little bit of color on the lips, but um, the painting is anchored in a very limited palette. Uh, this is uh, possibly a better example uh, of an, a monochromatic palette that's based on orange. So it could be a good example on why, um, uh, from the standpoint of a painter, we should contemplate and think more uh, in regards of monochromatic or very limited color palettes, rather than just um, thinking of uh, a lot of color. Um, so some very important art schools and art teachers, uh, they start um, their courses with very uh, limited color palettes and monochromatic palettes are the first ones. So I also brought um, examples of uh, James Whistler monochromatic. I don't know if this is going to be able to be, yeah, this one right here. Uh, Nocturne, 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 I don't know. Blue and silver. I think this is the Thames River in London, and this was painted in the late 1800s. But to me, it looks extremely contemporary. Uh, Prussian blue, uh, our favorite blue now. There's a figure on the painting, but this is another example of very, very, very limited monochromatic palette. So um, yeah, um, many examples um, uh, and hopefully, um, many examples. There are many examples out there and hopefully uh, this will be a reminder of how important uh, creating a monochromatic palette or, or uh, contemplating, considering, uh, considering a monochromatic palette is. So I'm just going to introduce the palette and I think I just have yeah enough space. Um, so this is, will be, I put it in the center and uh, on the upper part, uh, cadmium orange. Uh, I used a um, um, uh, secondary color, cadmium orange. And then to make a monochromatic palette, we would say, okay, we just need white, this is titanium white, and we need a black. Um, this is Van Dyke brown because it's a warm black and I thought it would be a good black to add to this warm color. So we could create a palette and we will create a palette with these three colors, titanium white, um, 
cadmium orange and Van Dyke brown. Uh, but I also brought other colors that we can mix in because the key of making a monochromatic palette with one color uh, other than black and white is to bring the opposite color to it. This is Fathalo blue. And um, the point of making um, or bringing this color is that we want to neutralize uh, the intensity, the pigmentation of the orange. Um, and what best way to uh, neutralize the pigmentation than bringing the opposite color. So that's why, and that's possibly the most important or novel thing about this uh, presentation. It's the fact that um, monochromatic is not just about value. Monochromatic is about two things, value and pigmentation. So this is extremely important because um, Limited doesn't mean that we just have to do black and white uh, to make the color lighter and brighter. That's uh, lighter or darker. That's the surface of it. Um, changing the pigmentation is important. So Fathalo Blue will do that. And in that sense, I brought two uh, accessory colors. Uh, so we brought Payne's Gray. This is the other black that we use. It's a cold black, so I put it at the bottom because I thought it would be good to have the Fafela blue and the Payne's gray right at the bottom um, to make, um, to uh, remove or uh, lower the pigmentation and also um, change the value. And then because uh, this is a secondary color uh, made out of red and yellow, I brought one of the primary colors in order to also change that variation uh, within um, or in between uh, the two primaries. I thought of bringing um, another color and I will, but not yet. <laughs> so I won't tell you. Um, so let's start by, um, oops, sorry. Let's start by um, just creating maybe a mix of the, uh, I'm just gonna bring, um, bunch of orange first to see what the color looks like. And uh, so this will be the color squeeze from the tube. It's very bright. It, it's barely used like that straight out of the tube, spe especially when we uh, paint something that's realistic or it has a certain level of realism. Uh, and then I'll just bring some uh, of the white, titanium white. And you can see that we can create, or we can use this color or this um, variation uh, only using the white, I mean the orange and the white, cadmium orange, titanium white. Um, but is this a practical uh, range of color? It is not. Um, th this, I would not use this directly whatsoever on a painting. And if I would use this, I would use it as a very, very uh, sheer glaze or in very specific places. So um, monochromatic, uh, automatically when we say monochromatic, we think, oh, well, it's just black and white. And it's not really the case. You can make something monochromatic using a base color. Uh, it doesn't have to exclude on the other colors. So what I'm gonna do is with a Van Dyke Brown, I'm gonna create um, darker versions of the orange. Now, this is a more practical um, or more applicable uh, palette. Um, uh, the range of uh, orange towards um, the Van Dyke Brown, this range of colors will be more practical and applicable to a painting of something that has some realism in it. Um, mostly because um, the black that we're using is a neutral color. It's not, um, it's not um, Mars black, which uh, it's not recommended for a, pa for a palette because anything that's super black, it's so neutral that it kills the, the color. It just reduces the pigmentation too much. So um, we can create a very simple scale Part of it could be applicable uh, to a painting. I mean, I'm sorry, this one applicable 
but this one not likely it's not um, very usual to find this super bright unless you change the colors or you create a very um, personal effect uh, what i'm going to do next um, i'll just use orange but this time i'm going to bring a tad of a phthalo blue that's possibly too much <laughs> yeah too much but that's okay i'll just leave it like right here phthalo blue is a chemical color or um synthetic color rather and uh so we need much less um amount or quantity in order to mix and that was an example of what happens when we don't so what i'll do now is i'm going to bring the titanium white and I'll try to create lighter versions with titanium white. Is this more applicable and practical on a painting? Yes, it definitely is more realistic than the simple black and white um, off of a, a color. So um, does it look blue? No, and that's the key of making a monochromatic palette with a color bringing an opposite color does not not make it monochromatic because uh, right now we have orange and blue uh, so you could argue that this is not really monochromatic but the key is just to bring the opposite color um, in the color wheel uh, or the opposite color in order in order to bring down the pigmentation or the saturation of the color you can still keep it within the same mono color it's orange, but it's not going to be as pigmented. So, um, yeah, let me just uh, bring the um, Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of the Fathalo, which I need to spread. I think that's possibly a better way of um, applying color uh, that it's uh, synthetic. Spread it so you don't pick up too much. And then um, I'll just apply it right here. So this range right here, um, it's a, a little bit even more applicable. When I say applicable, I say practical or realistic. Uh, realistic in the sense that, not that it looks real, but in the sense that it makes more sense. Um, and um, a little bit of this color. Not as dark, but when I bring the blue, it is. So what I also want to uh, show you is that um, we can go uh, down this. Let's do another one. Just going to bring orange, uh, cadmium orange. Let me just bring it. Um, let me just bring it. I want to see if I can make a, a, a gray out of it. So this is the orange, whoops. Yeah, I'll just put a little bit here. And I'll bring a little bit more of the Fathalo blue. Yeah, I think I would, that's, that's as far as I would go because otherwise this would be, uh, then we start creating something a little bit uh, less orange. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll just bring some, uh, some of the white, titanium white. And to me, the, the more desaturated, like these colors right now, are really, really uh, realistic or practical or applicable. So right now, um, we're going into a range of colors. I should probably start like adding or add a little bit more uh, titanium white. But we're going into a range of color that um, it's on the edge, because you could argue that this is really not orange. Well, the key is to mix or um, spread the value and the pigmentation um, throughout a wide range. So the, the spectrum uh, doesn't look very uh, limited. So um, I, would, I would definitely add uh, this color in things that would be um, uh, orange or uh, a landscape, a sunset, um, or a room or a piece of furniture or something that I want to exaggerate the color of, 
um, I would definitely use uh, these sort of like tones with a little bit more blue. Uh, if I go more uh, blue, then then it, it's not going to have the monochromatic effect. It would be uh, uh, two color palette or uh, technically this would be called complementary, complementary color palette, which we'll do next week. Um, but I just wanted to give you an example of um, monochromatic palette. And let's see if we can do from this. I'm just going to bring uh, let's some medium. I'll bring um, some of this and uh, create perhaps even bringing some of the paints gray. Yeah, this could be a good example. Paints gray instead of um, instead of the Van Dyke brown. brown. In fact, um, just bringing the paints gray could create uh, now a version of that orange that's very tarnished or very, very dark. So uh, this is actually a really great uh, combination of colors, better than uh, using Van Dyke Brown that we did right here. But um, yeah, um, using the paints gray could be a good, could be a good idea. So what I'll do next um, is I'm just gonna lighten up some of the orange on the lighter scale by just adding a tad of yellow. So we, let me just clean this. Um, we worked on the value uh, based on the pigmentation of the color, but now we can pull that orange, we can pull it towards the yellow and still be orange uh, within the same um, scale or the same value scale. So this would be a version of the orange. And that's by the way, this is um, cadmium yellow medium. Um, so this could be another version of that orange. Maybe they have a tad too much, too much yellow. But um, no, it's still, yeah, I would still use it. This is pretty much, maybe this has too much yellow. So I could um, bring some of the orange and make it if I wanted to. It just depends on uh, how I would apply or where I would apply the color. But to me, the, the point is that I could still um, be within that um, monochromatic range and use one of the um, primaries in uh, the complementary color uh, to enrich, widen, and bring uh, more color um, to that palette. So same thing on the other side. But for the other side, what I wanted to do is I don't, I don't want to bring a red. Uh, let's see. What I'll do is I'll bring the burnt sienna because it's a very reddish um, neutral. And I feel like uh, I've done it before. We did it before with the uh, uh, sunflowers. The burnt sienna, um, it's such a strong, warm color that it could be a good combination rather than bringing red uh, in order to warm up. Um, some of the orange notes that we may have. So, um, yeah, maybe even uh, this greenish ones. Um, my point with this uh, demonstration is to show you that the range of value uh, temperature and pigmentation within one uh, base color is infinite. We can just create so much variations of that color. And this is the reason why it's so important to at least, I'm not saying just stick with a limited palette, but at least practice um, painting things with a very, very, not even a complementary palette. Uh, think monochromatic palette where there's a dominance of one single color and then you create variations um, using um, uh, opposite color paint or paint that forms um, the primaries that form the complementary color. So um, yeah, I think that uh, that's it. That's my, um, that would be my presentation. And if you mix these two colors, you create brown. Uh, so I think anything that, is brown would be at the end 
of that orange spect spectrum, anything that combines those two and, be, and, be, and it becomes muddy, um, it would be the, the extreme orange. But from that point to anything close to white, uh, there's an infinite range of colors that could be used to create a monochromatic palette in the style that um, I tried to show you with the Monet, um, Rembrandt, uh, and uh, Whistler palette, which is um, monochromatic, but with uh, variations. Uh, uh, Monet, I, show you, I showed you the example of the purple one, um, Rembrandt with the orange one, and uh, James Whistler with the blue one. Um, so when you look at these paintings, you don't think monochromatic, and that's the key. Um, uh, the key is uh, to create a wider range of colors so it doesn't look uh, like it's, there's absence of color. Um, so I love these palettes. I think um, we're overdue to create a series or a painting uh, with these restrictions. And we could do these every week uh, with the three complementaries before we even move to a complementary palette with the purple and the green because it would be really excellent to find out or to see how the color would react. Um, and I think that's all, that's a presentation. We're gonna uh, now stop the, uh, I think I'm just gonna continue, but I'm gonna cut the recording when we upload it um, here. And also, um, what else? These are very, very important uh, demonstrations because when we paint, we don't have time to explore, experiment, and try combinations of color. Uh, it's simply too much, uh, there's too much going on during the sessions. So I really enjoy, we really enjoy these sessions because they allow us to uh, explore without uh, having to deal with any associations. So um, yeah, thank you.